Let's take three deep breaths. And the deep in breaths. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. All right. Yoga of the Absolute Truth from the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of the Lord, our textbook. And we're going to start with the sloka. The subject of today's lesson will not be understanding the divine, but rather figuring out how we might have an experience of it more often and practicing that a little bit. And the basis of it is a sloka. And here's the sloka. This is the voice of Krishna or the Lord or God speaking. It, it is easy to reach me, Arjuna. He says it's easy. It may not be easy for us. As a matter of fact, we may not. Uh, experiencing, uh, reaching the divine so often. But the scripture says it is easy to reach me, Arjuna. For the yoga practitioner, steady in practice, our spiritual practices, who thinks of me constantly. Ah, there's the rub. Who thinks of me constantly and has no greater attachments. So this is going to be the subject of Satsitananda's talk today, how can we live our life and be functional and experience everything and think of the divine constantly? How, how can we do that? What are some ways of going about that with no greater attachments? He says, Satsitananda's paraphrasing the scripture. Yes, my dear Arjuna, whoever keeps me in his or her heart constantly without getting distracted by anything else always gets me easily. Good morning. Good morning, you're welcome. You're very welcome. I'm Steve. I'm Deborah. Hi, Deborah. I facilitate here. I'm Janice. Hi, Janice. That's my wife, Janice. Hi, Janice. 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 That's a beautiful cardinal watching over. Oh, beautiful. Oh, right. my oh, dear. Yes. And a black squirrel. I know. He keeps going back and forth. Do they turn black because of witch hunts? No, they're just another breed. Oh, they're yeah, more in Maryland right. than they are here, but rarely see them here. Yeah. I came from Maine and there are no black squirrels in Maine. Right. Uh, <laughs> there aren't too many in Virginia. Yeah. I'm going to Sorry. step. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to step backwards. Well, it's good We're to be aware. Here. And that's what the subject of the talk today is going to be of awareness. What is our awareness? And this awareness comes from a chapter in the Bhagavad Gita called the Yoga of the Absolute Truth. Yoga being a lifestyle practice. And this uh, chapter is in the Bhagavad Gita, which is the Song of the Lord. Here is the book that we use, the Living Gita, by Sri Swami Satchidananda, his translation and commentary. We're going to jump right in 
to chapter 8 to a verse. And in Sanskrit, a verse is called a sloka. A sloka. The sloka has a lot of information in it. We'll actually spend the rest of the class discussing the sloka and how to use the spiritual information there. This verse comes from chapter 8 and is the 14th sloka. The voice speaking here in this story is the voice of Krishna or incarnation of the Lord. Jesus speaking, you can think of it. Divine entity and Krishna speaks to uh, every man, every woman, every person. And in this story, that person is called Arjuna. Arjuna. So he says, it is easy to reach me, Arjuna. Well, that's nice to know, isn't it? It may not be easy for us to experience reaching the divine. It is easy to reach me, Arjuna, for the yoga practitioner steady in practice. We have our spiritual practices. Yoga practitioner steady in practice who thinks of me constantly. Well, there's the rub. How do we think of the divine constantly? So that's what we're going to talk about in practice. And has no greater attachments. Who thinks of me constantly. Here's the commentary by Satchidananda, he paraphrases the scripture. Yes, my dear Arjuna, whoever keeps me in his or her heart constantly without getting distracted by anything else always gets me easily. He paraphrases the sloka. It's a promise. The only problem is how to think of him or her constantly. Father God, Mother God. How to think of him constantly. The key is understanding what constantly thinking of God means. It's not that you just sit there in a corner and think of him constantly. So what is it? Instead, involve yourself in daily activities, feeling that all you're doing is an offering to him or her. And this is one of the ways to experience the divine. Involve yourself in daily activities, feeling that all you are doing is an offering to him, to God. Make sense? In this class, I try to do two things. One is to provide information, and the other is to have an experience, an experience of what these teachings are. So if you're willing, I've prepared a little experiential exercise to try out and experiment what it might be if all you were doing is an offering to him. So in these exercises, there's two ways you can do them. You can do them as an observer and sort of watch. Or you can actually participate in it and see how the exercise stands with you. See how your mind reacts to the exercise. All that lines. And observe that. And see if the exercise lands in your heart. If it lands in your heart, good, then you may want to uh, keep it. If your mind argues with it and doesn't like it, well, you may look for a, a different one. Okay? So, here's the exercise. You can do this exercise uh, with your eyes open and watch the screen, or I'll repeat the uh, instructions in the exercise, and you can do it eyes closed. Either way works. <coughs> So an offering to God, make everything an offering to God. Observe what you are doing right now. 
I'm going to guess. Breathing. Heart is beating. Thinking thoughts. Repeat after me. I offer my in breath to God. I offer my in breath to God. After you repeat it out loud, repeat it silently to yourself. I offer my in breath to God. I offer my out breath to God. I offer my out breath to God. Place your attention on your heart. Repeat after me. I offer my heartbeat to God. I offer my heartbeat to God. Repeat it to yourself. I offer my heartbeat to God. 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 Place your attention on your mind. I offer my next thought to God. I offer my next thought to God. I offer this thought to God. I offer this thought to God. I offer my last thought to God. I offer my last thought to God. I have two exercises planned today. This was the first one. Any comments or questions before we continue with the commentary? Let's return to the commentary. Feel that all you are doing is an offering to him. That's one way. Or feel that everything is being done by him or her through you as an instrument. So here's a second approach, isn't it? Feel that everything is being done by him or by her through you as an instrument, which is a higher level. For example, we have the song, Make me an instrument, Lord of thy peace. So this is not something foreign to us. We've sung this song many times. Make me an instrument, Lord of thy peace. Feeling that everything is being done by him through you as an instrument. Shall we try that one on for size and see how that feels? 
do another little exercise and then we'll, we'll look back at it. With in, oh no, I got some more talking about it apparently. <laughs> With individual consciousness, you might feel that you are doing things. But in the back of your mind, you keep on knowing, without that higher consciousness, I can't do anything. So I'm only an instrument being made to get involved in various activities. more explanation for our minds how to hold this about the higher consciousness can't do anything so I'm only an instrument being made to get involved in various activities so this is all fine and good to think about and understand not take exception to but what's it look like if we try to practice it so we try and practice it and see how it, it feels for us and, and see, what, uh, see what shows up. See, what's, uh, see what our truth is. Each of us has an individual truth. So these exercises are designed to let our own personal truths show up and perhaps expand from what, uh, what it currently is. So here's the exercise. Again, you may do it eyes open or eyes closed. And I'll read the exercise. You repeat after me and then repeat silently to yourself so that your heart opens to it and you can see it lands and wants to stay in your heart. Observe what you are doing right now breathing heart beating thinking thoughts maybe having a feeling repeat after me god is breathing in through me God is breathing in through me. God is breathing out through me. God is breathing out through me. God is breathing me in. God is breathing me in. God is breathing me out. God is breathing me out. God is breathing me. God is breathing me. Let's continue the exercise. Place your attention on your heart. Place your attention on your heart. Repeat after me. God is beating my heart through me. God is beating my heart through me. Repeat it to yourself silently. God is beating my heart. God is beating my heart. Place your attention now on your mind. Repeat after me. God is thinking thoughts through me. God is thinking thoughts through me. Repeat silently to yourself.
God is thinking thoughts through me. 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 God is feeling feelings through me. God is feeling feelings through me. God is feeling the feelings through me. God is feeling the feelings through me. God's feelings are the feelings in me. God's feelings are the feelings in me. That completes the second exercise plan for today. So we've tried two exercises to see how they would show up for us. One is having everything be an offering. Mother, Father, God. Everything. Every function of our body everything in our minds, everything we observe, being an offering to God. The other practice we experimented with was having everything we experience being God's doings, not ours. They are just happening to us. God is breathing me. I'm not in charge of breathing. In a way, there is no I. No, I, I don't breathe. God is breathing me, and I'm observing. We can do that now. Hmm? God's still breathing me. I don't even think about my breathing, do I? No. So who's in charge of the breathing, since I'm not thinking about it? In a spiritual sense, I am not the doer. God is the doer, or the universe is the doer. Breathing me, God is breathing me, God is beating my heart. We can take it a step further and say, even the thoughts that show up in my mind are not mine. Not really. They're just God's thoughts showing up there, and I'm noticing them. Sometimes I take the thoughts God puts there very seriously, <laughs> and sometimes I take them lightly. But the universe or God is impartial. It puts the thoughts there as part of nature. God is nature. The thoughts show up in us according to our nature. Hmm? Where do we get our nature from? None of us were here a hundred years ago, were we? We were all born. We were born with a certain nature. We can look at that nature as having been given to us by God. When our bodies decay and go away and return to God, well, all those thoughts we were thinking that God put there, no longer there. God's thoughts occur in the body, in the mind. And we can also imagine that our spirit were there before we were born, be there after physical bodies die. And during that interim, God was in charge of everything. But somehow we got this illusion that we were in charge. I, me, my, 
we got the illusion that I am an I and you are a you and they are them. The others, you know, the others, the ones who are worse than us, or maybe the others that are better than us, but certainly different from us, the others. That's the illusion. Where did that illusion come from? Thank you, God. It's part of how we uh, deal with life. We deal with life through language. Human beings have the capacity for language. And in language, there are words. And the words include I, you, them. They're useful words for everyday activities and commerce. But on a spiritual level, there's no such thing. There's only God, no I, no you, no them. And to find that experience, we come to a church called Unity. Unity, no separation. And we come to a class called Yoga. Yoga means unity, yokes, no separation. It's one thing in my experience, to hear about these things intellectually, it's another to have an experience of them. That's why I chose these exercises. So look and see if uh, these exercises make sense. Let's, let's see what Satchitananda continues to say about what we just experimented with. I'm only an instrument. I'm only an instrument. I'm being made to get involved in activities. I strive to constantly remember that higher consciousness. So whatever you're doing, you can always step back and say, oh, God is doing this through me. How freeing that is. God is doing. God is even thinking my thoughts, beating my heart. Taking a step back. The advantage in remembering God this way is that it doesn't boost your ego, that I, you, them construct. That's so useful and yet it's dangerous. It doesn't boost your ego. If you remember that everything you do is the act of God, then you won't be thinking, I did it. That's my accomplishment. I did it. That's my accomplishment. No, you can hold it well. God did that through me. Thank you, God. God's breathing through me. Thank you, God. It's very free. Know that God is the one working behind everything. God is the one who sent you here. God is the one who's going to get you back. He brought you here, she brought you here, the universe brought you here, God will take you back. So we don't even have to worry about birth and death anymore. It's all in God's hands. Brother Russ gave a great sermon today about anxiety, reading the news and getting anxious. Some of us may be anxious about dying. It's not something we talk a lot about in our Western culture. Well, if we're not in charge of our dying, and God is, we can just relax, go with the flow, and be alive right now. That's the definition of eternity. Totally immersed in the now. That's eternity. Our anxious thoughts from God, too. Say it again, please. Our anxious thoughts. Our anxious thoughts, everything is from God. Our anxious thoughts, too. We don't want to exclude anything, otherwise our mind will come to bear and say, oh, well, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Those are all mind thoughts. So if you have anxious thoughts, Rev. Ross said we all do these days, especially if you read the news and believe in it. One way to hold it is, ah, those anxious thoughts are God's thoughts in me. 
Are these anxious thoughts a lesson or a blessing? You can further step away from your the thoughts that maybe you wish you didn't have anxious thoughts. Are these thoughts a blessing or a lesson? Maybe they're just a lesson in how our mind works, how our instinctive and reactionary mind works. In a more primitive state, if we heard something scary in the bush, we might get anxious. What's that? Is that a tiger out there making noise in the bush? And we might get anxious. That's a beautiful feeling and a beautiful thought given to us by God as uh, a blessing and a lesson. The blessing is to be alert. Now is the time to focus on that thing that is giving me anxiety so that I can properly deal with it. So the anxiety shows up. Thank you, God. I need to put my attention there and focus on that right now and take my mind off whatever else I was doing. Then, once the source of the anxiety vanishes, oh, that's not a tiger. That, those are squirrels scratching on the trees. And the anxiety goes away, as it typically does in a more natural state we can go back to doing what we were doing. However, in modern life, we have what I might call artificial anxieties. Artificial anxieties. I was reading something I subscribed to on the internet about the 1930s and what the political life was like in the 1930s. You know, in the 1930s, we had a big depression a lot of people were out of work. There were some people who were very, very rich and some people who were very, very poor. The newspapers were filled with articles about democracy and how it wasn't working. It wasn't working anymore. We need to find something new. Many people headed over to ideas from Marx, commune, commune, communism. I thought, this is a better way to organize ourselves politically. Share everything with everyone. Instead of the rich taking so much and the poor having nothing, we share things. There are many articles about the death of democracy. It wasn't working anymore. Sound familiar? People were very anxious about that time. Very anxious. We look back on it and we say, well, where did that anxiety come from? It was sort of artificial in a way. We, we interpreted our lack of a, a job as something to be anxious about rather than to deal with it on an everyday basis. <clears throat> then there came a point, I think it was 1937 or 38, when the consciousness of the country changed because President Roosevelt had put all these programs into place, the Works Progress Administration, WPA, people who didn't have work or getting jobs, people who never used to mix with each other, Chinese, blacks, whites, and so on. Now we're working together, building bridges and roads and so on. So a different consciousness among some people, there's always the doomsdayers, came into the country and the national dialogue began to alter. And people saw things as being better and the national anxiety diminished to a certain extent. Then when the war came, no matter what the anxiety was about people dying or getting hurt in the war, there was a great enthusiasm when everyone went to work in all the war industries, making war goods. People were working. Money was flowing. So your question was, does God give us anxious thoughts? 
or provide the space for them to show up in. I think so. Does that make sense to you? So when the anxious thoughts come up, instead of sort of reacting to them, can we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that anxious thought. I wonder if it's a blessing or a blessing. And if I don't see the answer to that right now, why, I'm going to be okay with that too. I'm going to be patient because it's all God given. It's, I'm going to be patient even with my feelings of anxiety. Just looking at it, holding that way, lightens things up. The anxiety hasn't gone, but it's a little lighter. So hold it a little bit uh, in our hands. Oh, I've been talking too much. Uh, we're going to close now because <laughs> it's time to go. We'd like to close by making the sound of Om together and letting that sound of Om take us down into our heart space. Let's begin with three conscious deep breaths. And a deep in breath. Shut, shut, shut. Oh, peace. God bless. Well, we didn't cover all my slides. But I think due to your beautiful question, we, uh, we did what we should have done. It was a good question. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah.